Hi guys and welcome to another video. In today's video lesson, we're going to be looking at grade 11 maths trig graph interpretation. And the question that we're going to be looking at appeared in the November 2018 paper 2. So let's get straight into it. In question 6, it says the graphs of the functions f of x equals to a cos b theta and g of x equals to c tan theta in the domain from minus 180 to 180 are sketched below. The graphs intersect at P, 58 degrees and 1.6 and Q. So there's our graphs here. And you can clearly see that G is the tan graph and F is our cos graph in the domain from minus 180 to 180. What do we notice? Well, we notice first of all that the maximum value here of the graph of F, which is the cos graph, is 3 and the minimum value is negative 3 okay which is now going to give us an amplitude of 3 minus minus 3 over 2 which will be 6 over 2 is 3 so the amplitude of f is going to equal to 3. what else can we see in this particular graph we can see that we have the tan graph which is drawn between minus 180 and 180 and we see very important uh, things that's happening over here like for example you can see that they tell us here that um, the asymptotes at minus 90 and 90 and also this graph bears all the traits of the mother graph now remember now you must know your standard form equations and graphs for example the standard form equation of the cost graph would be y equals to a cos b into x minus p degrees and that's going to be plus q remember this tells us the amplitude the positive of that value is the amplitude of our graph b we can work out the period by saying 360 divided by b for cos and for sine that will give us the period of our graph this one is the horizontal shift x minus p degrees x minus p degrees means the graph will move p degrees right x plus p degrees means it moves p degrees left and here this is the vertical shift plus q means it moves q units up and minus q is q units down now for the tan graph y equals to a tan once again b into x minus p degrees plus q remember tan has no amplitude the range is from minus infinity to infinity if you're working on the period of a tan graph remember it's 180 divided by b will give you the period of the tan graph x minus p is my horizontal translation remember if it's x minus p it's p degrees right x plus p is p degrees left plus q is a vertical translation plus q is q units up and minus q is q units down now let's answer some of the questions right it says write down the range of f what is range guys range the range is from your minimum y value to your maximum y value so it's y element from your minimum to your maximum uh, y value and i think we already discussed that it's going to go here now see from minus three minus three is my minimum y value to my maximum uh, y value is three so we'll write down that solution as follows y element from negative three to positive three next question 6.2 says if m is minus 45 degrees at minus one lies on g determine the value of c now as you can see here now from the mother graph right the tan graph looks like this so the tan graph you can see y equals to tan x has an asymptote at 90 degrees and it goes up like so and at so at one there and 45 degrees and similarly see if you go down this side to minus 45 degrees it's going to come down there and it's going to have a point here at negative one okay so if you know your mother graph for each one of your functions, sine, cos, and tan, you can actually answer these questions here by comparing the current function to your mother graph. And if you look carefully, you can clearly see here that if this is here 45 degrees and you've got minus one there, 45 degrees and minus one, they tell us it's minus 45, minus 45 degrees and minus one. So therefore, we can clearly conclude that c is going to equal to one all right so there's no change from the mother graph okay so c is equal to one write down the value of a and b so if you go back here a and b is contained in the graph of f which is the cost graph 
and you can clearly see here once again the mother graph of course looks like this okay so it's gonna be from there like so right so we give that sketch it goes it goes from minus one to one so minus one to one okay and then you get intersection points at 90 and 270 and then you get a minimum value there at 180 degrees and then 360 degrees there. so i'm just drawing it from 0 to 360 right so we can see now what's happening here with this particular graph if you compare it to your mother graph y equals to cos of x you can clearly see here that it makes one full cycle here right from minus 180 to 180 so the period is basically the same 360 degrees just like the mother graph the only difference is this particular value here which is the a value and i think we worked it out it will be the maximum minus the minimum divided by two and there's no reflection of the graph you can clearly see that so that means a is going to be positive so a is going to equal to three so a equals to three and b is going to equal to one why because remember now the period of this graph is 360 divided by b from the standard form function here there's a standard form here remember the period how do we calculate period of the graph of a sine and cos graph period equals to 360 degrees divided by b so b is equal to one so the period of this cos graph is 360 degrees All right moving on determine the coordinates of q so the coordinates of q if you look at that carefully oh there we go there's q here it's intersection point and we're going to now look at this intersection point which is p right so we can actually calculate one intersection point from the other one so q is going to be first of all the y value is easy to calculate here because if that's positive this will be negative so that's minus 1.6 and then remember now we want to compare it to a particular point so if you look carefully see it's going there to 90 degrees there so we can just use this point 90 degrees so if you say the distance between these two will be the same as the distance between these two points, the asymptote and Q and P and the asymptote. So we can use our calculator. Let's use it, right? So what it will say, 90, how are we going to calculate the distance? We'll say 90 minus this point here, which is 58, 58 equals to 32. So that means 32 degrees there and 32 degrees there. So we can clearly see now that 90 plus 32 will give us the X value there. So you can say 90 plus 32 equals to 122 degrees. So that will be 122 degrees. So the coordinates of Q will be, Q will be 122 degrees and minus 1.6, minus 1.6, okay? So as you can see, we are done. Quick recap, 6.1, 6.2, 6. and 6.4 done. 6.5 k lies on f such that km is parallel to the x or to the y-axis right calculate the length of km let's go look at that quickly so km is this distance here so there's km is that distance so what can you tell me now if it's parallel to the y-axis that means the x values are going to be the same so that's also going to be minus 45 degrees so we just need to find the y value where does this K lie on it lies on the graph of f so you can now find the y value by substitution now we, we already found the value of there a and b so we know its equation let's go substitute so that will be three because we found a to be three cos cos we know b is equal to one so now we just need to put minus 45 degrees which is the x value and we are done what's that so we got three root two over two. So three root two over two. Three root two over two will be the y value. Now how does one calculate the vertical distance between two points? It'll be the top y value minus the bottom y value. So you're gonna get here now. Three root two over two minus minus one. Okay, let's go write that down. So therefore km is going to equal two. Km is going to be three root two over 2 minus minus 1 which is now going to equal, let's put that in the calculator so that's going to be 3 root 2 and that's going to be over 
let's do that again so it'll be three root two all over two so it'll be minus and in brackets minus one you can just put plus one right equals two so that's two plus three root two so this will be let's write it here two plus what we got there three root two three root two all over two which will equals to let's write the decimal answer one time and that will be three comma one two units so it'll be three point one two units okay so that'll be the distance of km last question if the system of axis is shifted 45 degrees to the left now remember that they're saying if the system of axis is shifting to the left axis moves to the left that means the graph is going to move 45 degrees to the right and that's how we learn it the movement of the graph not the axis so if they tell us the axis is moving to the left it means the graph is going to move to the right and if the graph moves 45 degrees to the right that's going to be x minus 45 degrees but in this case remember that they don't tell us x they give us in terms of theta there so you can say theta minus 45 degrees so it'll be theta minus 45 degrees okay so if you understand the standard form graph here movement left and movement right as i mentioned earlier on in the lesson x minus p degrees means the graph is going to shift p degrees to the right so we can now complete that what they say here and the graph remains fixed right down the equation that is now represented by f so we can say f of theta is now going to equal to 3 cos theta minus 45 degrees and that's now going to be our solution 3 cos theta minus 45 degrees okay because the graph is going to shift 45 degrees to the right the graph is shifting 45 degrees to the light uh, to the right because the axis is shifting 45 degrees to the left that is if you haven't subscribed already subscribe to jl maths my youtube channel like my facebook page justin lazarus mathematics and you can watch all videos in order of the work schedule on jlmaths.com and i'll catch you in the next video